I want to know what barriers in the U.S. today as a woman. What's stopping you as a woman? As a woman. As a woman. See, as a woman. That, uh, you need to be able to answer that. Then. There's a pay gap, but it's because women don't want to do the hardest industries. I don't think it's that simple. I think, like, I think that's just an oversimplification. I think the fact of the matter is that women structure their lives differently to men. That's true. Wow. Sydney Watson with the correcter answer than the just pearly brain dead things of like, ah, oh, pay gap's not real. I'm a well, pay gap is real. You just explain why it's real. Because women do opt for different work. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Well, I don't know. Women do structure their lives differently, namely around having children. I don't think that trans women should be allowed into athletic spaces. Female athletes, we work so incredibly hard for the little opportunity there is in women's sports. I like how inadvertently just pearly things and she realized she's f***ed up. She's the first woman on the panel to give a concrete example of a barrier and she did it accidentally. So these people aren't used to actually defending their ideas. And now that they're on like a confrontational show, it's like, how are you going to sit here and challenge me on stuff related to feminism? Like, I'm just right because I say it. So yeah, of course, it's, it's, it's frustrating. Ooh. We're here to talk about feminism. Oh, shit. First, I just want to say we know we can't represent everybody's views, but we did try our best to bring together a diverse group of women today. In today's polarized world, is feminism dead? I strongly think that feminism is more of an action than an identity. I would say it's uplifting all women, in which case it's very alive. At the same time, um, if we do follow that definition, feminism has splintered off into so many different areas that you can look at um, people like Sheryl Sandberg who say you should just get another nanny if you feel oppressed. And if we're talking <laughs> about that kind of feminism, um, yeah, it's pretty dead. There's something that we're really going to have to strive and work, work towards. Um, to make sure that there's equality. So feminism is not dead. Okay. I don't know that it can die. As long as there's power and oppression, there will be people fighting for equity. And um, until that somehow goes away, feminism is alive and well. Okay. I think feminism um, isn't actually about equality. It's about equality when it benefits us. I think feminism Ooh. is really about women wanting special privileges and treatment at the expense of men often. And I think it's alive and well, sadly. For me, as, as a womanist, as a black feminist, right, as someone who's really Did you say as a womanist? human rights, Is that dignity, a thing? right, equity, right, as long as that's not, that need isn't met, we're still gonna keep fighting. For me, I just see it as a lens, which isn't necessarily antagonistic or uh, protagonistic. It's just a useful tool. Similar to what Pearl just said, That's a I find term. that a lot gotcha. of feminist ideology and thought today feels more of like a supremacist movement rather Wait, than- Wait, have I talked to this person before or do I know this person? And something that is supposed to be advancing the goals of equality. I don't think that we can really term what's going on as feminism because it looks so different to, I think, the earlier feminist movements. So in that way, I'm I don't know if she's like a YouTuber or something. It's last breaths of life. It's Oh, wait, is she the girl that Vosh said lied about being raped? Oh god, that video is so bad. <laughs> oh no. Sydney Watson was that the one? Dying. Oh, yeah, this I mean, was the Vosh clip. Really Do you think it maybe speaks a little bit to the fact that we have a culture when we put six people in a room together to talk about Me Too and the four when they're like, hey, who of you have experienced sexual assault? And the four women sit down and they've all been and they all can barely choke out a coherent sentence. Uh, uh, um, like, does this, do we think this perhaps maybe slightly speaks to the fact that there's a problem? Like, huh, Me Too has gone too far. False allegations are ruining people's lives. Okay, who among you have experienced sexual assault? And like every woman in the room starts crying? Like, <laughs> I, almost every female friend I have has been uh, ex ex the, the recipient of sexual assault or violence or whatever at some point in their lives. Seriously, it's such a common thing. I think one in four is probably understating it significantly. I wouldn't be surprised if the rate for sexual assault on women over one's lifetime was as high as one in three or one in two. We just don't know because nobody reports because reports aren't taken seriously. That's what Me Too is about. You're like, I don't think things are on the same level, but things impact you in like bizarre ways. But yeah, like, because the perpetrator wasn't white, um, and because he was, like, I, I'm, you know, part of, like, a certain religion. Uh, oh, wait. Are we being real? <laughs> and the police were basically just like, we can't because um, of cultural differences, which I don't feel like is such a good... What? <laughs> Bull 
bullshit. Are you f***ing kidding me? Did she turn her f***ing rape confession into how, onto how the rape fugees Ahmed Muhammad her and the police were like, oh, we can't persecute brown people. Bullshit. <laughs> I mean, do you buy that claim? Um, I don't know. I mean, like, there is, like, an argument that Vosh has here. He just, like, probably did it in probably one of the worst possible ways you could ever possibly do it. Um, and honest to God, I don't even know. There might be, man. Dude, I've heard so much random shit between, like, reporting stuff based on, like, race and ethnicity and shit that I'm not sure. I don't know anymore, man. Damn, that's a rough one. Who knows? It's possible. I wouldn't outhandedly deny it. I'd have to look for more stories about it. But then again, I'm not as comfortable as Vosh is when it comes to just, like, blatantly shutting down. <laughs> Somebody telling the story is just absolutely fake. I think it was in, uh, was it in Sweden where they said they were no longer going to record races for, like, crime stats? I don't, I don't think. That's just, like, you're giving so much ammunition to the other side when you do stupid shit like that. Like, it's just not, that's not a good look. Yeah, I definitely think um, it's getting more and more radicalized, for sure. So it's, it's definitely still alive. I think I'll preface and say that I don't know so much about modern Western feminism and there might be a lot of terms that I don't know, like political jargon and stuff. But I believe in the advancement of women, whoever considers themselves a woman. Uh, I think there's a deficiency in society. So it's deeply rooted that um, feminism has always existed. I think America's a little obsessed with themselves and it's like always feminism is rooted in America <laughs> and like, oh, white women started it. And it's kind of offensive because for thousands of years, women have been dying for their rights. I think as a black woman specifically, uh, when you talk about feminism, yeah, the mainstream first thing you think about is a certain type of feminism that tends to exclude still, even today, even with intersectional fem feminism, exclude um, African-American women. And it's always kind of done that. And also upper middle class white women has predominantly been the face of what we quote unquote consider feminism. I think feminism is attempting to say, okay, the first thing we agree on is that there are barriers and friction to what I need and what I want based on the fact that I'm a woman. What it ignores is that, and what privilege is, is that you may not have to think that being a woman and being a black woman and being a black woman who has a disability, for example, impacts you further. You have more barriers, you have more friction, you are less able to get what you want. You're undervalued in a way that's like, Okay, well, you know, that's life. That's what I mean by equity and okay. that we're able to, without friction, all get the same needs met. Okay. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, see, I disagree with that. I think life is easier if you're a girl. I feel like for just pearly things, you can basically take whatever the most aggressive red pill position will be and then just print that opinion. And it's that's always going to be what she says. Like, just whatever the most aggressive, like, anti-woman, like, red pill opinion is, she's always going to say exactly that. If this was Pearl's world, I'd get rid of birth control, I'd ban it, but I, that'll never happen. Hello? I think that's the root of all evil. And I'd actually go for the root of all evil. The root of all evil. That's what she said. Okay, my girl. Say it. I, I, don't, I, don't, Say I, it. I don't think women should no. vote. Huh? I don't think women should vote. I don't think women should vote. Lord Jesus, keep on going. <laughs> yeah, that's no it. women, you can't vote. No birth yeah. control. Yeah, keep it going. Yeah, I know, because it's always freedom without responsibility. And I so, love like, it. The women reason... should not vote. No, but, Pearly but said I'll it you, herself. I'll tell you why, though. I'll tell you why. Because it was freedom without responsibility. I love And before this. women, like, the, the con like, I believe in consequences for your decision. So the men know if they vote someone batshit crazy into power, you guys get drafted. We don't. Women decide elections were 55% of the population. I think if we want to vote, equally draft us. Y'all want equality. And personally, I don't want to get drafted, so I'll be in the kitchen. Like, how many times do you think at some point, I should have like a bingo card. At some point, is she going to bring up like how women aren't in the draft here? Like at this, um, in this conversation, it's always like shit like this. It's always the same point. Yeah, Actually, I think, I think there's a lot of benefits um, <laughs> that men don't have. I'm, I'm not going to speak anything to race. I'm just talking about gender specifically it's usually like an excuse like honestly i think as a girl you have equal opportunity in the world i think there's benefits like for example we have quotas for women in specific jobs that are given to us that aren't given to men so yeah i would i would say it's easier being a girl just from a viewpoint over here though it seems there's a lot of privilege pretty privilege in what you're saying and mm. that you're white and you present you think i'm pretty thank you i think <laughs> that you present in a way that beauty standards have accepted and so they call me ugly on the internet all the time they, they be roasting me daily i swear to god there are a certain value that we give to certain bodies 
I mean, let's also dig into why these quotas exist and why these, um, what you're calling because privileges Because we want exist. special treatment. Um, no, but it's because there have historically and presently in most jobs been fewer women mm -hmm. and because of sexism. How is it sexism when we have no barriers today? So we can, we can pick what no we want to pick. It doesn't have barriers. Women don't, don't have barriers? I'm, women, yeah. What, what's we stopping have no you? Barriers. You can do whatever you want. Uh, I can you? or you can? What's stopping you? <laughs> As a woman, as a woman. As a woman. As a woman, See, as a woman. That ignores a lot that I'm a woman. You need to, you need to be able to answer that. That's cringe as fuck that you don't have a single fucking answer. That's a really common question you're going to hear, especially if you're pushing hardcore feminist stuff. What's stopping you from succeeding today? You've got a ton of affirmative action. You've got a ton of cultural support. You've got a ton of social support. you got a lot of government support. What's stopping you? You have to have an answer for that. If you don't have an answer, what the what are you doing advocating for your position here? Woman with a disability. So mm -hmm. there's a lot stopping me that you mm -hmm. don't have. Yeah, but a man with a disability have problems too. What do you mean a woman with a disability? That's, you're just a person with a disability. Fuck there. Is it harder for women with disabilities? If so, explain how. Think about well, as I you said before, I'm about. speaking about women. I'm not, you're speaking I'm not, as a, you're speaking for yourself. You're speaking as, a, as an able-bodied able -bodied -bodied woman. Woman. I, I that understand. Is white. Of, course, white. of course, of course, there's going to be other barriers if you're disabled. I'm sure. Well, like I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm talking about as a woman. So you're just going to ignore. What's your answer to this question? Um, right now for women, um, I think that the issues, um. I think that the issues that women face, it is a very subtle, very subtle and very nuanced conversation. Um, the idea that like women are hardcore oppressed or kept down in society, as of 2022, I don't really think it's true anymore. I think we've, I think we've moved on past that, pretty well past that. Um, now we can get into very, very, very subtle cultural conversations about it. Um, and that's where the conversation should be moved to. But, but if you're out here using words like oppression, Probably not anymore. Not in the Western world, at least. Um, now, if you want to talk about like in places in Africa or the Middle East or maybe Eastern Europe or whatever, sure. But in the Western world, we're, we're I think we're good. White the women have it gap. easier. Yes, I would agree. What? <laughs> you're, you're just going to ignore the pay gap, um, regulation over bodies. The pay gap has been well, proven the and debunked. Pay gap doesn't exist, leave, my friend. Oh my it God, doesn't. That's it's, so the, funny. it's the industries that women pick. Let's talk there's, about there's it. There's a pay gap, but it's because women don't want to do the hardest industries. I don't think it's that simple. I think, like, I think that's just an oversimplification. I think the fact of the matter is that women structure their lives differently to men. That's true. Wow. Sydney Watson with the correcter answer than the just pearly brain dead things of like, ah, oh, pay gap's not real. Why am I? Well, pay gap is real. You just explain why it's real. Because women do opt for different work. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Well, I don't know. Women do structure their lives differently, namely around having children, right? That's true. Men don't give birth. Men don't have have to carry pregnancies. Men don't have to be the primary caregiver most of the time. Women also don't hold jobs for as long as men do. They often will stop and start. They'll go back into work. They'll take time off. They'll take part-time jobs. The way that men work and women work are astronomically different. And to try to say that they're comparable is, is where this issue comes from. They're not comparable. Two things. First of all, um, let's dig into why they think that um, they should take these jobs, which is society, societal sexism. And then also, um, actually, all I mean, Department of Labor, all statistics, at least speaking in the U.S., um, have found that when compared for the same jobs, there still is a pay gap, particularly when it pertains to race. Because six that pay gap is very, very, is vanishingly small, though, right? That 13% or the 20% one that gets cited, that's aggregate wages across all sectors. Once you start controlling for sector and everything, there is a pay gap that exists, but I believe it's less than 5%. It starts to get much, 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 much smaller. 60% of women have never asked for a raise. So how can you complain about your pay if why, you don't why ask? Are they, why are they? Hey, what happens when women ask for a raise? So, Sorry, I just, sure. I've, been, yes. I've been wanting to say something, but I want to be respectful. Of, I don't, like, don't want to interrupt Do people, it. and I want to let them finish their just thoughts. jump in. Just but, you know, go through just, the wall. Uh, when I'm thinking about feminism, I'm always thinking about who's not part of the conversation. What are the barriers? How do we think about equity? How do we think about self-empowerment and agency and having a voice, right, and having choice? Mm -hmm. And thinking about our basic human rights. It's education, access to health, uh, homes, like having bread, having food, and those things are very important, right? And they're at the crux, right, about of what a lot of us here know that we need. It's like there are the barriers, right, that we constantly ignore that are very much systemic and microaggressive, right? We see them and experience them every like day. Like what in the U.S.? So, like what? What would you like to know an example of? Some I, I know you said you said that there is like barriers. I want to know what barriers in the U.S. today as a woman. Well, as a woman or as a woman of color, let's be. Come on! So you so you don't have an answer then? What do you mean? 
specific to as me. As a woman, I and said we as don't, a woman. Well, no, I can't answer as a woman. I, then the, then the issues aren't then the issues aren't about women. The issues are racial. Then what are you doing? It's right? kind of hostile when you're like. I don't, I, there are no barriers to what I want. Congratulations, that means you have a privilege where you're not facing any friction and that's I mean, showing and I feel like it's I think like as an Ameri I think as an American, you're very privileged. Oh, like, I mean, I'm right. not ignoring that. Yeah, We're right. at like a so. basic level of what, I mean, the feminist movement is when it comes to just being born a woman, right? Physically, pound for pound, we are born as women and we have less lean muscle mass than men. So there are issues of violence and assault and stuff like that. And so therefore, there are policies, there are things to help women physically, like, for example, I believe- Damn, do you think a black woman like shows up to these like oppression panels and she's like, I got this shit on fucking lock. And then some fucking white bitch missing her legs rolls in and you're like, oh, this motherfucker. Being able to carry a firearm and being able to use that safely to defend yourself against men who are born naturally with more muscle mass than a woman. I keep hearing the term equity. What would in a world that, that has equity look like? Like, would it be would it be fifty percent of everyone in the same jobs? Would it be like prison fifty percent? That's equality. Fifty percent. So, yeah. so, so what does equity look like? So equity is generally described as a state of fairness because historically a lot. Oh of my God, that was so tautological. What is equity? What is equity truly? Well, <laughs> equity is fairness. Okay, you didn't tell me anything. Like one is one, thanks, chief. People have been arguing for equality, but mm. what does that give us? Um, like uh, like 0.5 of the 1% being woman, this doesn't really do anything for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. um, and so people have talked about equity instead, which is um, instead of sameness, it's fairness. Mm -hmm. and what does that this mean? Would mean that we remove systemic barriers mm -hmm. to- Like what? Um, to engage in society. These are so, all these terms are so academic, right? Like, can you give me anything in the real world that doesn't sound like you're pulling it out of a fucking textbook? Systemic, which systemic barriers? What do you feel like needs to change? Give me like one or two like measurable changes that you'd want to see in society. What are one or two things that we could work on? Anything. Not just for women, but also for so, everyone. So which barriers? Yes. Okay, Those barriers so that you don't believe in. Uh, <laughs> Is anybody gonna give a single answer to any fucking question here? Uh, yeah, what I does don't, it do I don't, for you to have a bunch of ramps in your life? It doesn't do shit. I need those ramps, right? Can we stick to male versus female? That's that's my question. So I, I'm thinking male versus female. But my so feminism what, so, includes so, ability. So, so, it includes so, but my race. Question. No, that, <laughs> it, okay, that can that's fine if you want to include it there. But like obviously th we're talking about a fundamentally different question here. Can talk. Women can versus talk. men. Like what what barriers do we need removed? Because that, that's my statement. I'm not. I'm not stating anything else. I'm stating women versus men. They don't have it's a single very answer. Silly. Like so. It's so what barrier? I just want the question is silly. Fair silly. Question. So, yes. yeah, I, I it's think, not a fair question. It's how is it not a fair question? Kind of proving the point of why what people, especially black women, other people who are anybody who's not white, why we hear feminism and we don't want that label because it means. It, I'm just gonna say it means that. Like it means that you're you've already gone into a pinnacle of whatever you think your happiness needs or whatever your survivalist needs are when there are people on lower end who are trying to survive, who are trying to get to a point of what should be normal. What does um, any of this have to do with feminism? Who are these people? Um, based on what other people have. It sort of sounds like you're saying feminism is not always inclusive then. Right. It's most of the time it's not inclusive. It, it, it's, it more times than not, it's, it's not. So, and within the just, Feminism space, again, they're obviously the very basic is male versus female versus, you know, but unfortunately, we've only had one subset of women be the face and voice and white the academic women. White and women. research and everything say it. to be able to say, well, that's the standard we need to be in when there are other people who are still trying to get to some type of say white women normalcy and just living. What is the biggest issue then that feminism faces? I think it's the mindset women taking like the agency, women taking initiative. I think it's mindset holding them back a lot because if you want to be in a competitive world and compete, you have to have the right mindset. And I think a lot of people blame their lack of confidence or what society tells them um, for the reason that they're not achieving what they need to achieve when that's not the case. You have to have the mindset of achieving because the men who built the world had the mindset of building it. So the women who want to engage and build that further, they need to have that same mindset.
I don't think we do. I don't. I think that's like assuming that we all want to be capitalist babies. Right. I think that. Oh my God! What do we? How did capitalism get roped into this now? What? Men are not well adjusted in the society, <laughs> and oh, women are not trying to re-embody what they have built for us. Mm. I think that like what we're forgetting is a very important detail, which is just like human respect and dignity. Yeah. That's and true. not asking people to prove what their experience is and to prove to you like. It is like such conservative thinking to say like, I don't understand, explain it to me, versus just saying, I don't understand and let me respect what you are no, saying. No, I'm respecting right? wherever you're starting point. I'm respecting that, I'm really respecting that. I'm saying that if you don't have the mindset, you can even achieve it. You're never going to even try. So it's but never achieve what? Like what are we talking about? Because I feel like you projected world. this like no, capitalist achieve, ideology achieve, on every woman. Achieve whatever it is you're looking for, equality, equity. But what you're, people like will smuggle anything they f want into their ideology to like do whatever they want with it. Like we're not even talking about feminism at this point. We've talked about racism. We've talked about ableism, like handicapped people. And now we are talking about capitalism. What, what, what does any of this have to do with feminism? What I'm saying is women in the feminist space and a lot of these other spaces, we don't acknowledge that we have to take the initiative. We have to take the action. We have to have the mindset. We have to demand those things. I don't understand how we're getting so off topic. This is about feminism, feminism today. Whereas everybody wants to make this about their individual, oh, I, here are all the, the multitude of other things that factor into my person. Great, yeah. this is about feminism. It's about womanhood. I yeah. understand that all of you have your own individual experiences and, and the other things that feed into you as a person, that's perfectly fine. But this is where intersectionality falls off the planet and loses, I would argue, probably the vast majority of people, including me. I'm not even a feminist. I don't give a crap about feminists arguing amongst themselves about who's the most victimized. But this is annoying to listen to. I honestly just, I don't understand anything anybody's even trying to get at. Look, I just want to say that I don't think equity and this concept of competition can't coexist with each other. Equity is building more facilities for people who need them. It is- Okay, you almost said something. Okay, this is something that I started doing, I think about a year ago. Um, that I uh, that I figured out, okay? Um, when you're talking about any issue, give an example, okay? It's really good. Sometimes I'll explain some complicated or some esoteric bullshit or whatever, um, you know? And then at the end of it, I'll just be like, for example, and then boom. When, you, when you're giving these examples, or, or when you're giving these like academic, or you're giving these like broad like macro perspectives or whatever, give an example so that we can ground this out in something real. Because I don't think, I don't know what building facilities mean, but we haven't talked about anything real this entire conversation. G give an example. Is recognizing that there are holes in the market and there's opportunities for women and feminine expansive people and meeting those opportunities. See, I, I think equity can can buoy the, the pre-existing system that we live in in a good way. And this is where we're going to get to um, what I think the real feminist arguments are, are based off of policy. And abortion is the biggest one. How many of you would identify as pro-choice? Let's do a show of hands for pro-choice. I feel like pro-choice is pro-life, though. But. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and folks who identify as pro-life, why do you so, yeah. identify as each? You've gone from legal, safe, rare, to, yeah, I'm so proud, let me beatbox in front of the Planned Parenthood, yeah, I got murder on my mind. I, the fact that, that it's celebrated that, that murdering uh, children, especially uh, in late-term pregnancies, is celebrated that people are so proud. That shit is ultra cringe. You ever see people doing that at protests, tell them to get the f*** out and leave. That shit like, oh, I love murdering babies, oh, like, bro, Lee, get the f*** out of here, you're so f***ing cringe, leave, just f***ing leave, you cringe loser proud of themselves from mutilating a fetus is just it, it, it blows my mind and i don't think that you need yeah. to be pro-life to even take that stand. And you said late-term pregnancy yes a lot of abortions do not happen i made the distinction well, i made the distinction right. specifically they, because right. lots of people still celebrate there are people who when the laws are passed actually here in right. new york they, they said yes great yes i love the right, fact but that you need to ask about what are people celebrating yeah. right they're celebrating access well, we're not well, celebrating okay. killing kids like that's that's but not what it why, is well, well so this is right? what i'm saying so, like, when, here's the thing when we're talking about access to reproductive health and to abortion rights right into being pro-choice listen that's your body you do you no. the child if is you not your body as i go a baby it's so scary for me to hear people calling like guns the biggest equalizer for women but taking their choices away from them at a policy level um why is that 
having a gun is an equalizer. It is. Having rights is an equalizer. Yeah, that's having a right. choice is right. an equalizer. Just like a gun right. And in this country, forms the birth policies control. that are pushed to continue birth perpetuating birth patriarchy <laughs> and anti-women, um, like taking the autonomy away from women, it is heartbreaking to see women pushing that propaganda. No, I, it's all brainwash. Like you, oh, it it's is, brainwashed because you don't think, agree with no, me. No, I because so I've been brainwashed. brainwashed. I have lived deeply institutionalized. Man, I, I have lived under I, Islam. Yeah, I'm not interested in any of that. Like there's no like you're guilt not for me. Human. No, I'm not interested in like living thinking that like thinking. women are doing this really bad thing like in it my is. religion abortion is actually allowed if the woman needs it she's allowed because you know it, it's very interesting how like fundamental america is like this fundamentalist is not, this is nothing to very, do very very like even religion this is a very conservative basic thinking. scientific yeah. human rights we're also talking about people not having access to abortion clinics where they're doing the things themselves and they die. No. Right? We're also talking about women in the hospital who are pregnant, who have chosen to stay with their pregnancy and have issues at hospitals and hospitals that are like, oh no, we don't do that. Listen, for whatever reason, you don't need to explain it to anybody, but a lot of times when we're talking about access to reproductive health, for me, I'm thinking about black indigenous people of color, particularly <laughs> women and girls who are working class. Black indigenous people of color, that's that BIPOC, we got it. Who do not have even access to like proper sexual education. It's the oppressive state of saying, I will force you to have a child even against your own will, right? Especially when you're thinking about women and girls who, who would be forced to have these children who are already living in very traumatized and scare and scare situations. You want to ask about barriers? That's a barrier right there. Women in poverty aren't able to access the way that rich women are. And no matter what happens, rich women are going to keep getting abortions and people in poverty are going to not. And the choice opening it up, the overruling is marginally affecting people of color, people in poverty, way more than people who are gonna get access to those abortions. Actually anyway. incorrect, you're mis the misquote. There's actually more abortions for people in poverty, it's just a, at a lower rate. Why do you- <laughs> wait, the, wait, why would you even say that? Wait, what? Think that abortion has been so tied up in this feminism conversation. It's all just social structures set up around bodies. So if not all women are able to have babies, but it's about the barriers and value that we give to these specific bodies, right? And so if abortion happens in a woman's body, that's why this conversation is coming up. Can I ask you a question? Sure. You said um, that not all women are able to uh -oh. have babies or uh -oh. pregnancies. Are you saying trans you women? like an infertility issue? Uh -oh. A number of reasons. There's all kinds of reasons that not all women are having babies. Pearl, I saw your hand up. Uh -oh. um, I think women want to sleep around and not have any consequence for it. Hell yeah, yeah we do. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, instead of, you know, taking personal accountability and being on birth control, they just want to, like, do whatever they want. <sighs> you say this like it's I a think bad that's thing. Yeah. What, dude? I, they must, they have to cherry pick the dumbest f***ing feminist, but it's not, it's Vice. I bet Vice actually thinks the feminists are doing well in this conversation. It's, like, so unreal. Are they even trying? Do you have any care to empower <laughs> women, or is disempowering women part of your, like, stees? To see this is shame, insult, guilt, need to be right, okay. Why is it empowering to sleep around? Like, the way Why you speak on women is very sort of like, ah, women just don't want to do this. Ah, women just don't have Sorry. this. Ah, yeah, women yeah, just want to this. Maybe I should and I wonder why maybe you should have should so much, like, hatred towards women. I don't, I don't hate women. Where does that root <laughs> in? It sounds I don't hate like women. you do. I am a woman. I am. I, I, that I doesn't don't, mean you don't have self-hate. I self can be black and still be internalized exactly. racism. Exactly. Like, yeah, I'm saying specific things that you're saying. Like, women don't want to work. Women don't want to this. Mm. Women want to sleep mm. around. Mm. Where did you learn these uh, belief systems from? Because, okay, the, the question was, why, why does abortion keep getting brought up? 40% of women that have had abortions have had two or more. 40%. So, so what does that say to me? That means you're using it as a form of birth control. And they don't track the 60%. What kind see, of abortion? Can you let me finish? They don't track the 60% to say who in the future has abortion. So to me, it's like, why are they why are they dying so hard for abortion? They want to sleep around with no consequences, even though you have 41 forms of birth control. I don't think that benefits women. I think actually that benefits men because it means that men can have sex with you without consequences.
consequence. It means that you can sleep with whoever you feel like. Great, but there are consequences because women are the ones who get pregnant and carry babies and give birth. In reality, for a lot of women, especially those who are doing it under duress, say that they've been raped or, you know, in, in, this, in the small circumstances where something really traumatic has happened to them, that's a medical decision. Or, or say that they're, they're miscarrying and then they have to, you know, have a, a, an assisted termination. That's a medical procedure. It's not a celebration of, oh, look at the... I think the delineation between that's a medical abortion and that's like a fun abortion is really interesting because they're all medical. It's all a medical procedure. And so no matter what you're doing, going in there and getting it, like that's, it's, it's not like, oh, you're only allowed to. It's just like, you should just be able to get a medical procedure done when it's something that you need done. We shouldn't be desensitized to taking someone's life. That should never be an empowering factor for a woman. I definitely agree in that like, there should be no absolute thing any woman should do. There should not be an absolute response to incest or rape or any of these things. Every woman should have the choice of if they want to or not want to carry that child, whether it is having fun, getting incest, whatever it is, it is. I don't glorify and glamorize Jeez. abortion. I think it's a very traumatic thing. I doubt that if somebody wants, has to do, like, if they have to do it, they'll do it. I don't think that people are, like, you know, um, doing, like, have six, get the seventh free and having fun with it. Um, and I think that, like, glamorization and glorification of any side is not okay. Did the Dobbs decision make anybody here uh, sort of rethink abortion, abortion access, reproductive health care. It's anti-woman. It does not center people to have that voice for themselves and their own decisions, right? It is a barrier. If you take out the, the, the viewpoint that life begins at conception, which is a, a really big defining principle for both uh, the pro-life crowd who very, very you know, vehemently believe that, and then obviously a lot of the pro-choice crowd do not believe that. Taking that out of the equation, you do not have just whatever kind of autonomy you want as a person, it's regardless of male or female. You can't just have free run to do whatever the hell you want. That's not how society operates. So at, no, question, point, at no point do I have the right to tell anyone in this room what they should or should not do with their body. But it's, not, but it's not yeah, about your body. Like, that's, it's it's that's not about me respecting I have a question it's not, here. It's not about okay, your body. Look. It's about the kid's body. I, I don't care what you do with it's your body. It's my body. It's, right? it's, We're it's, talking it's, about talking my about body. body. The Dobbs decision for me reinforced how important it is that we approach these issues from a cultural perspective because it reinforces something that I have told uh, many of my colleagues and peers in the past, which is that so long as you lack a cultural consensus, any issue, any issue can become a political football that can be decided by another election cycle. And so long as there is no strong consensus, uh, I would expect this to be our reality going forward. These extremely vitriolic and aggressive conversations until there's another miraculous consensus that brought about Roe v. Wade. Should trans women be included in feminist conversations? How about in women's spaces? Yes, they're women. So, so I play semi-pro basketball, semi-pro volleyball. I don't think that trans women should be allowed into athletic spaces. I think we, as female athletes, we work so incredibly hard for the little opportunity there is in women's sports. Would this be a like, barrier for like you? This, there's no barrier. There's less opportunity in some industries. That's, That's what a barrier is. There's less. It's not. No, no, no. It's That's based on the I like how inadvertently just pearly things and she realized she's up. She's the first woman on the panel to give a concrete example of a barrier, and she did it accidentally. <laughs> uh, what a f***ing cluster f***. Mark, okay, hold on, hold on, guys. Let's... Okay. So, again, we work very hard for the little opportunity there is in the space because we're not as entertaining as the men. Sorry, we're just not. And so it's like you're going to take the little opportunity that we're given, and the problem is, like, it, we can't compete. We can't. Like, I, I'm six foot. If I go up against a six foot guy and I play basketball with him, he's going to body me. And even what happens even if, if I go even up against if, you? Even, 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 body even, 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 even if I have Wait, did the wheelchair woman just say that? Of training. And so it's like you're taking away the little opportunity that we're given and we all work so hard for. And you're just giving it back to biological guys. It's like this will be the end of women's sports. Have Eli, you tried confidence? Uh, Eli, hold on, Minnie. <laughs> Sorry, Eli. confidence can't make me bench what a guy benches. I don't confidence can't make me six seven. You guys are so hostile. She's sharing her and experience. And confidence can't make me six seven. No, field. she's sharing. And trans I'd have misogyny. to go. No, she's not. Trans, she's did she just say trans misogyny? I've never even heard that one before. Oh my god. 
Okay. She's a woman who's had it, no, an it's experience. Also, it's it's also, you guys are so obsessed finish. with your own experiences and your own existence, and yet when a woman is sitting here telling you, I feel as though this is unfair and this is compromising and this situation is not helping women, you guys are like, meh, meh, meh. but when you're like, I'm a black person that did this, 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 and this, then it's vi valid and, and fair and viable. Eli, I want to give you the chance to respond. Um, so this is basically a joke of a talking point. Everyone has biological advantages in sports. How, how tall are you? Um, five eleven and a half. I'm yeah, tall. I'm I'm five foot eight. Mm -hmm. I am a trans woman. I then this is this is all. If anybody's ever gonna pull this stupid talking point at you, then just go. Oh, should we eliminate women's sports? Then you should just ask that next. Oh, should we eliminate women's sports? Then. And if you want to get, if you want to be really edgy, if you want to be really really edgy, then what you could ask is, oh. Would you say that men and women are at equal risk of raping one another during a date? What? What does that have to do? Well, do men and women have an equal risk of raping each other during, is a man just as much at risk as a woman? Well, what do you mean? Every, there's biological differences in everybody, right? Would you really say that men are stronger than women? Aren't some women stronger than some men? Probably true. But broadly speaking, right? Because you're saying they're all different. There's biological differences, right? You could ask that if you want to be really edgy. You would crush me. You would absolutely yeah, crush bone me. density, wrist strength. Yeah. Muscle density, you can't switch those. Yeah, exactly, you would crush me. But also, Eli, you would never play at the level that Pearl plays because um, you would never get there. So let me give you a few more examples here too. So Michael Phelps produced more lactic acid in his body, which caused him to swim better than any of his competitors. This was widely celebrated and- Produced more lactic acid? I thought it said he didn't have to suffer like the byproduct of like the production of lactic acid. No, I don't remember. Michael Phelps is always like the go-to example of like, oh, he's got a long torso and he does something differently. Therefore, all men and all women can compete with each other. It's always that one example. It's always Michael Phelps. He is like the go-to trans example for. <clears throat> Nobody contested it. Now, to, this is in performance enhancing hormone. So we all have different bodies. And now I'm not saying that trans women who aren't on hormones should participate, but there are, I mean, every major medical and every major sports organization agrees that trans women who have been on hormones for between one and three years, depending on the organization, have the same competitive abilities. That's, that, did the study that you're referencing had like seven people participated. That is misinformation, not, by the way. That I'm is referencing not several different studies. I'm a trans woman and a researcher. It's getting this, personal. This I don't want thing, it to though, be personal. A lot personal. of us live in this space where we're told that our sure. opinions don't count because they're not the right kind of opinions. And we're constantly shouted over and talked over regardless of what we look like because there's one group in society that basically takes precedence and it's frustrating. So yeah, of course, <laughs> it's, it's, it's frustrating Ooh. because when we try to talk <laughs> about it, we get I'm shouted down, we get told Ooh. to be quiet, we, we we get we get spooken down too as well. Okay, so yeah, there's hostility there for plenty of women. Let's try to make this an opportunity. <laughs> to oh, oh another laugh. Like a white woman from Australia. You live in a bubble and you're pissed that voices that have been silenced forever finally can be heard. That's why they have the voice because they speak up. Okay, we're having a conversation about transgender women participating in sports, and I wanted to allow more people to participate. Jordan, I wanted to hear from you. So I am not a professional athlete. It, the closest thing I have ever done to anything athletic was I used to do competitive show choir when I was younger. And um, I don't feel really qualified to make carte blanche statements about whether or not trans women should compete in every kind of sport. And I understand that that is kind of, that's a hard pill to is swallow. It, I, is and, this person trans? Or I don't know, I'm not sure. And for me, my first inclination is to approach everything through a lens of inclusivity. But at the same time, I also can't speak accurately to yes, every kind of sport and the different things that go into it. So I really think in these instances, the decisions are best left up to the professional governing bodies that dictate these particular sports. Damn. I just feel like in places, as an ally, in places where there's no understanding, we can just respect and not an really, ally. like oh. our opinions don't f matter. Eli, I saw you nodding your head over there. Several times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, th this is more than about sports. This is about um, free, free and equal participation for transgender people in social life. And the right sees this as a socially acceptable way to begin to remove trans people 
from different engagements in our society. So it does just start with sports or bathroom. Holy shit, or the transgenocide. Room, something that they find is more acceptable. And then at this point, they started to move into education, getting trans teachers fired, banning trans books. This is a route that um, is very effective because it's seen as more acceptable. Um, but it's also overlooking a lot of major details. Like, I mean, do y'all know how many um, trans women have won national titles? One too many. One. one it's, too it's many. Leah Thomas is the only one. One too many. If, it's if one woman, too many. <laughs> if, if women's sports were actually going to end in some way, um, I mean, it's just not happening. Wouldn't you think there would be more trans women in sports when the majority of states do allow trans women full participation? International it's a dog titles, shit argument. Zero. No um, global titles have ever been won by a trans woman. <laughs> I want to move on background. to a different topic. I want to talk about Me Too and sort of this social movement that we've lived through, we're uh -oh. living through right now. Uh -oh. What is the state of feminism sort of in this post Me Too era? We're in post Me Too? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. Um, Sorry, I got distracted by the Me Too part. Uh, so I was like, we're in post Me Too? Wow, like, no one's getting like sexually harassed anymore. Like, <laughs> we did it, guys, world. we solved the right? problem. We want that world. Um, no, I, I, I think, obviously, the, the state of feminism is very much reflected right in this room, but. What do you think about the selection of people? We seem to be arguing more with the left-wingers instead of the right-wingers. Is the selection just after all the left-wingers that brain dead? I think that, again, for I link, a lot of these like really progressive ideas, it's just like, you're just not allowed to challenge any of these. So these people aren't used to actually defending their ideas. And now that they're on like a confrontational show, it's like, how are you gonna sit here and challenge me on stuff related to feminism? Like, I'm just right because I say I am. Like, there's no challenge to be had here. And a lot of these people just can't discuss any of these ideas anymore. Me too for me, right, in a particular context, means something for different people. It's a different experience for different people. And in, in my culture and in my community, we're still working through that. There is no post Me Too, right? We're still working through how do we have these tough conversations? How do we teach not just, you know, women, but everyone about consent? What does consent look like? What does that look like in our community? What does that not look like? Right, all those things that I think it's still very complicated. But I think it starts at the level of community, right, of like how do we have these conversations around consent? Sydney, I saw your hand up. So uh, when the Me Too thing was unfolding, I was initially like, great, I love the idea of women being able to speak out. What's been really disappointing, I suppose, for me, post Me Too, as, as we're calling it, is that, and especially as someone who's sort of on the right wing of politics, um, I think that a lot of the experiences of women on the right get a bit trivialized because there is a lot of politicizing of sexual assault. So when something legitimately happens on our side of the table and someone tries to speak up about it, there's almost an automatic disbelief and I understand why it's because of the believe all women type of stuff that, that came out of the Me Too movement that a lot of us were like wait a minute no no people do use these situations for gain people do make things up people do lie but it is sad to watch it happen it makes me sad that we're here Jordan I feel like there'll never be a post Me Too because at the heart of it, Me Too is just a phrase. The spirit of what Me Too represented will always be relevant. And that is that you are empowering individual women to advocate for themselves and speak out when they feel like they're being wrong. Ideally, you're just trying to be the most transparent and self-accountable person you can be. And you need to hit all of those fronts, If again, if you want it to last on a cultural level. How about beauty standards? We, we talked a little bit about- Are they editing out all of Just Pearly's answers now? Are they just done showing her answers? <laughs> what the fuck? This, this got brought up at the beginning. How does that tie into femininity? Sorry, I'm very into this idea because I do think it is one of the larger intersections that just doesn't get very discussed, which is like I was talking about- Are states allowing trans athletes a bullshit argument, not disagreeing, just curious about reasoning? Saying that not many trans people are winning, therefore it's not a problem, is, a, is bad for a couple of reasons. First of all, if I were to put a bunch of weak men in women's competitions and then they were to lose, would that be an argument in the affirmative that men should be allowed to compete with women? Well, no, right? Let, there could be, we could, um, we could think of a ton of other reasons why, what am I doing? Oh, we could think of a ton of other reasons why trans women aren't like winning a whole bunch of national titles. There might be a lot of other barriers that they face that aren't biological or training related that's preventing them from succeeding. And once those things get fixed, maybe they'll start winning in mass. It could be because trans people are a very, very, very small percentage of the population. But most importantly, 
and here's the killer one at the end. Let's say that it was the case that 10% of national titles were won by trans women, which is highly disproportionate given the percentage of trans women in the population. If you were to ask one of these ultra feminists, let's say trans women won 10% of the titles, do you think there's a problem then? They'd say, no, that's okay, more than likely, which goes to show that them saying, well, not many are winning, so it's not a problem, that's, that, that logic doesn't hold because they wouldn't believe the contrapositive, which is you're saying that not many are winning, therefore it's not a problem, therefore, if many are winning, it is a problem. They go, oh, no, no, that's not a problem either. So they don't actually care about that. It's just an argument they wheel out and they don't really care that much about it. About before, barriers and friction are placed up around bodies. And the fatter I get, the older I get, the less people will listen to me, the less value I will have for society. So, you know, I'm already starting out as a woman with no legs. If I had something on my face, I have my beauty. That's one of my privileges. I have my whiteness. That's one of my privileges. I used to have thinness and now I'm getting fatter. Things are changing. And I think every single time that we talk about feminism, um, pretty privilege should be discussed because we have these ideas. If you, your skin tone is this, if your hair is this, if your body looks like that, it's about whether or not you are given um, an equal opportunity based on what you look like. I saw a pro. Um, I think up. a lot of times the women that complain about beauty standards don't complain about them when they got privilege, when they were young and attractive and thin. So it's like, yeah, you're complaining when the privilege is gone, but privilege is, but privilege is invisible to those who have it. And women, we, it's, it's a privilege. And men don't turn 18 and get looks that we get. As a black woman, uh, one of the most integral parts of the beauty conversation has become, has been colorism. Um, I'm a dark skinned black woman, proud of it. And In chat, would you guys consider Sneeko dark skin? Okay, most of you are no, okay. Would you guys consider Myron dark skin? This is Myron right here. That's Walter, fresh. Well, I feel like this is like poisoning the well because you're gonna think he's lighter just because he's next to a darker guy. Well, but I'm curious. I always call him Walter because I thought I heard his name was Walter once, but I don't know if it's actually his name. Okay, here. Is Myron dark skin yes or no? I'm curious. Okay, 33% yes, 66 no. If you're not light skin, are you dark skin? Is there medium skin? There's light skin, mid tone, and dark skin. Myron is mid tone. Nobody uses mild tone or mid tone. Yeah, I've never heard that expression before, but I mean, it might be something I've never heard. Okay, so DGG chat is one third on Myron being dark skin, two thirds on Myron being light or medium, I guess? Would you consider him to be lighter than this woman? He is lighter or darker or the same. Let's try this. Oh, here we go. Interesting. So it's almost 50-50 in terms of... I'm so confused, but, but before you guys, like two thirds of you said that three options versus two options. Okay, never mind. This topic, <laughs> abort abandonment. 